Two, pipe end gauging and marking. Three, selection and assembly of installation tooling. Four, lockering fitting installation. And five, post installation quality control. Cut the pipe within five degrees of square, leaving a minimum straight length of pipe equal to the length of the fitting to permit it to slide fully over the pipe end. For fit-ups allowing no gaps between butted pipe ends, pipe ends should be squared using a tri-tool or equivalent pipe-facing tool prior to fit-up. Remove inside and outside burrs in accordance with good pipe-fitting practice and to prevent metal filings from contaminating the piping system. When cutting into burring pipe ends, care must be taken to protect the pipe ends from pipe wrench or vice jaw marks. Pipe ends should be free of longitudinal scratches, pits, flat spots, corrosion, paint, or other debris for a minimum of one and a half pipe diameters from each pipe end. Manually sand the pipe ends with 150 grit aluminum oxide cloth or equivalent in a circumferential direction to remove surface porosity and to aid in inspection of surface flaws. Visually inspect the sanded surface for scratches or pits. Deep scratches or pits should be removed using 80 grit aluminum oxide cloth, then blended with 150 grit cloth. For industrial installations, an anaerobic pipe thread sealant, such as Loctite PST or equivalent, can be used in lieu of sanding with 80 grit cloth. An anaerobic sealant is always required for thin wall Schedule 5 pipe. Take care to sand around the circumference of the pipe. Axial sanding can result in undesirable flat spots on the pipe end surface. Remove all metal filings, grit, etc. from the outside and inside surfaces of the pipe after pipe end preparation. Visually examine the pipe ends prior to fit up to ensure that the desired surface condition has been obtained. Using the cutout in the multi-purpose gauge labeled no-go Check the diameter of the sanded section at two points 90 degrees apart. If the pipe passes through the cutaway in the gauge at both points, the pipe OD may be below the minimum specification required by the fitting. If so, measure the pipe OD using a caliper or equivalent and compare with the minimum allowable OD specified for this pipe. Two marks shall be placed on each pipe end to aid in positioning during installation and for post-installation inspection. To do this, slide the larger hex end of the multi-purpose gauge over the pipe end until the gauge bottoms out on the pipe end. With an indelible marking pen, draw two marks through the milled slots on the multi-purpose gauge marked Install and Inspect. Visually examine the pipe and fitting prior to fit-up to ensure that the pipe is properly prepared. If an anaerobic sealant is to be used, Apply it evenly and uniformly around the pipe circumference, starting one quarter inch from the pipe end and extending to the beginning of the inspect mark. If uniformly applied, a very thin layer is adequate. Do not over apply. Pull back coupler locking sleeve on pump and fully engage hose nipple into the pump coupler. Release locking sleeve to secure hose into pump. Remove dust caps from hose coupler and from lock tool head nipple. Retract coupler locking sleeve and fully engage coupler axially onto the lock tool head nipple. Then release locking sleeve, allowing sleeve to snap forward to complete connection. Manually advance the thread locking ring on the coupler until it butts against the back of the coupler locking sleeve. This will prevent accidental separation of the installation tool from the hose during operation or transportation. Advance and retract tool jaw several times without the fitting to ensure that no air is trapped in system and that hydraulic couplers are fully secured. Lock tool jaw should advance and retract smoothly while cycling. Engage assembled lock tool head on desired fitting size for fit. The tools are designed with inserts that can be interchanged if desired. For each fitting size, there is a body insert and jaw insert that are secured into the lock tool head using button head screws with a 332 inch 
Allen wrench. To install each insert, take a jaw, the jaw insert and orient it in a C fashion. Insert it into the lock tool jaw and then orient in a U fashion and line up with the button head screws. After you've installed the jaw insert, do the same with a body insert. Once complete, you are ready to do an installation. Slide the lock ring coupling onto one pipe end. It should slide easily over the pipe and must not be forced. Forcing a fitting onto the pipe end can cause damage to the fitting sealing surfaces. Align the second pipe end with the first and butt the two ends together. Center the fitting over the pipe ends such that part of the install mark only on each pipe end is exposed. The length of the install mark is the pipe insertion tolerance. Both pipes are properly inserted into the coupling provided the install mark on both pipe ends is partially covered by the coupling body. When making up the first end of the coupling remotely from the second end, for example in the shop, the smaller cylindrical end of the multipurpose gauge may be used as an installation aid by providing a physical center stop for the pipe inside the coupling body. With the lock tool jaw fully retracted, engage the lock tool head on the lock ring fitting. The body insert slots into the tool groove between the fitting tool flanges while the jaw insert cradles the coupling swaging ring. Make sure that the lock tool head is fully engaged onto the fitting before actuating hydraulic pressure. If the fitting is cocked in the jaws or not fully seated, the fitting and or the tool may be damaged during installation. Verify that the fitting is properly positioned on the install pipe mark one last time before actuating the hydraulic power. During the installation, make certain that the lock tool body does not move relative to the pipe. Actuate the hydraulic power. This will cause the lock tool jaw to advance the swaging ring axially over the fitting body until it contacts the tool flange. When this happens, stop actuation of hydraulic power. Remove the lock tool head from the installed coupling and inspect the first end installation. The outboard install mark shall be largely or completely uncovered, but the inboard inspect mark must be partially covered by the trailing edge of the fitting body. The first end connection is now complete. Prior to completing the second end, check that the pipes are properly aligned and supported to avoid pre-stressing the connection before and after installation. Ensure the second pipe is properly marked. Insert the second pipe into the open coupling end until it makes contact with the previously made up pipe end. Turn the lock tool head 180 degrees and with the jaw fully retracted, engage the head on the uninstalled coupling end and actuate the hydraulic power to advance the swaging ring axially until it contacts the tool flange. The lock ring connection is now complete. Each lock ring swaging ring should be fully drawn up over the fitting body. A small gap between the swaging ring and tool flange is acceptable provided the fitting body extends from underneath the trailing edge of the swaging ring at all points around the periphery. If the fitting body does not extend from underneath the trailing edge at any point, re-engage the lock tool head and complete the installation. The quality of the lock ring installation is determined by visual inspection only. No post-installation gauge verification or dimensional check is required. The inboard inspect mark on each pipe end must be partially covered by the coupling body. If the inspect mark is fully visible, the pipe on that fitting leg was insufficiently inserted into the fitting and the fitting must be removed. The lock ring connection is now ready to hydrostatically test. 
To review the five steps required for a successful lockering installation, one, pipe end preparation, two, pipe end gauging and marking, three, selection and assembly of installation tooling, four, lockering fitting installation, and five, post installation quality control. By following these five steps, you can achieve quality pipe connections first time ever, even under the most difficult field conditions. There are five simple steps to the lockering connection.